Hey everyone, welcome to our DAT IQ weekly market update. This is our update for July 8th, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT, joined as always by the sagacious Ned Damon, Principal Data Scientist at DAT, and joined also by Dean Croak, who's a uh, Principal Analyst at DAT. Um, Dean will actually be talking with our head of product later in the program, um, and we'll be launching a new carrier focus show surrounding DAT1. So we're really excited to hear more about that later. Um, Dean, you want to talk a little bit about um, the, the new show? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ken. Um, yeah, we've got a new carrier focus show coming up shortly. Um, one of the keys for truckload carriers is being able to understand what's driving demand. And, um, you know, knowing the directionality of demand, uh, shifts in supply and demand in particular, understanding which direction rates are heading for which equipment type, all those things are really important for carrier profitability. So if you think about the pandemic, it's a great example of why we need more information in the marketplace. Uh, it's been a roller coaster ride in spot market rates for carriers. It's highlighted the need, I think, to better understand operating costs and more importantly, what external factors that are going to influence carrier decision making over the next year. I'm excited to hear it, Dean. Um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of our updates have covered the carrier side, but I think that having more of a deep drill down into the, the micro factors, like uh, I remember last week when you were talking about lumber and the impact of that on flatbed rates, I think is going to be really helpful to our carrier um, audience. For anybody new, each week we go over what's happening in the freight market at a high level and share the weekly rate forecast for vans, reefer, and flatbed. Uh, this week, in a nutshell, a, a hazelnut shell, I suppose, for this week, um, because it's a little bit bigger, rates have continued to climb, uh, which is good, but there are uh, some signs of market cooling, which is what we'd expect for uh, heading into the post-July 4th season. Uh, MCI charts are reflecting strong demand in all equipment types. Uh, back to school and produce season and lumber are all strong drivers of those higher June volumes. And then um, the forecasts generally point towards a cooling off of rates post July 4th, like we've expected, but uh, we live in interesting times and I'll be excited to see what's going to happen. Uh, Ken, do you want to take it away with, oh, wait, I forgot something very important. There is going to be no show next week because of our wonderful video producer. Uh, her daughter is getting married and so she will not be able to uh, have our faces all over the internet. Uh, but I think somehow people will manage. Ken, do you want to take it away with the freight dynamics? Sure. Hopefully these charts will help assuage some of the chagrin and disappointment um, that people are probably feeling after hearing about that. So uh, we're going to talk about load to truck ratios first, as we do most weeks. And so I want to kind of, before I forget, lay out one thing. Uh, the 4th of July is captured in here, just the kind of the way we divvied up the weeks and it fell on a Saturday this year. So Part of the reason why you're seeing a little bit of a hooking pattern in all of the charts that I'm going to show for load to truck is due to the fourth and usually the day before or the afternoon before and the fourth itself and then the day after typically you're seeing lower in service on the capacity side and lower load volume on the demand side so that being said you know we saw we things peak out probably a little bit uh, better than we would have expected leading into this given all that's going on with COVID um, but on the drive-in side we saw it peak out just shy of 2017 and then kind of come back down as we saw in prior years. Moving forward to reefers, again, same trend. We didn't see it peak as high, but if you remember, if you look back, we saw um, kind of a longer period of increase there on the reefer side. Um, on flatbeds, again, it's been more muted, but more consistent. Um, so you'll also see that it's been going up for quite a little bit and then kind of tick down, maybe not necessarily as impacted by the fourth uh, looking at MCI, this is drive in MCI. And, you know, generally speaking, we're seeing that shelf push north. If you were really kind of fastidious about going in there and checking each of these updates week over week, you'd see kind of the first line of um, market areas off the Gulf started to cool off. And then that's per pushing further and further north uh, for drive ins. We still see the Texas border um, markets remaining rather hot. Pushing the reefer, again, as the areas of extreme heat tend to cool off, they tend to radiate areas of more muted heat. And that's, again, the trend we've been observing and what you're seeing now. You are starting to see some blues permeate into Appala Appalachia um, and then kind of the, the traditional um, western areas before you get to the coastal KMAs. 
Um, flatbed is the last MCI map we'll show. And again, a lot of intense heat here. Um, we talked a lot about this last week, so I'm not gonna kind of go over already covered ground, but just to show that we are seeing similar trends in MCI. And you know, the interesting thing about MCI, right, it's, it's correcting some of those seasonal day of week uh, week of year type components. So it's giving us a more true idea of relative strength in the market. So which is that this is why you'll see some of this not as uh, mechanically affected by holiday. Uh, turning to spot rate trends, some really interesting and I think for most folks, good news here. The drive-in rally hasn't really let up. So I, I think most of us would agree in hindsight that we overshot the peak we were expecting. As again, 2020 is the red line and we saw it essentially split right, right between 2018 and 2017 levels. Now, we've talked a lot about this. The yellow line 2017 ended the year much differently than the green line, which was 2019. So it'll be interesting to see how much we fall off over the next couple of weeks. Frankly, if we fall off at all, I think that that's probably the most unlikely scenario, but um, and how rates tend to settle into their pattern before retail picks up in the early fall. Uh, year over year, I just bring this up to show we're, we're bumping up against $1.85 a mile for dry vans which is considerably above pre-COVID, but, but again, the pre-COVID time didn't have the seasonal component. Seasonality was softer than that it is um, this, this last week. Same trend with reefers, not as sharp, but again, we will expect almost a violent correction downward due to seasonality. So what we see in the year over year charts is kind of a lot of open ground to the right of the most recent data point, which would indicate either we're gonna collapse back down as seasonally expected, plateau out, or again, most unlikely scenario would be rates continue to, to trek upward over the next few weeks. Uh, we do pull flatbeds in now, um, just based on a lot of feedback at our Ask IQ inbox. And what you're seeing is pretty much a mishmash of 18, I'm sorry, um, 17, 19, and 20, sitting right on top of each other. Um, still well below where we were in 2018, but above where we were in 16, which was the, the last real major down year for rates and freight. Uh, looking year over year, you start to see signs of a correction, and that's the ultra short-term look. Again, the reason why we only use this for targeted analysis is that line could very well jump back up tomorrow. So we're just kind of keeping an eye on it to see what's going to happen with flatbeds in the short term because we're starting to see some signals of contraction. So with all that, I will turn it over to Ned to walk us through our spaghetti charts and the forecast this week. Everybody loves a good marinara sauce, Ken. So uh, let's turn to some forecast for this week. We're going to start off with our van forecast. Um, you can see the blue line is the actual market rates observed by DAT. And then off to the right, you can see our four strands of spaghetti, red being our short term, uh, more focused uh, forecast. Green being our rate cast forecast, that's our flagship forecast, and that incorporates a lot more kind of structural factors. And then in the middle, we've got our gray and yellow, which are blended forecasts that are mixtures of the two uh, in various ways and in varying amounts. Uh, going forward, you can see that there's real model divergence. Uh, the short-term forecast is expecting that the, the upward trend is going to keep trending, whereas the rate cast forecast is expecting that the normal kind of seasonal and structural patterns will reassert themselves. Uh, for my money, I would bet on the rate cast forecast, but there is a real, we're in unusual times and there is a real chance that the short term forecast comes out true. I would expect it to have seen a little bit sharper of a market correction immediately post July 4th uh, in a more normal environment, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We live in time. Uh, moving on to reefer. Again, the blue line is the actual market rates observed by DAT. And then off to the right, you can see, again, there's that big divergence between the short-term forecast in red and the rate cast forecast in green. The short-term forecast is expecting things are going to continue up into the right in a very strong way, whereas the rate cast forecast is expecting kind of a, a slower downtick to a plateau at about $1.95, but I may need better glasses. Um, and in the middle, the blended forecasts are mixtures of those two. And what I said for Van, I think, is also true for Reefer. Um, in the, to the extent to which we're moving back into a normal pattern, the green curve is going to be more accurate. And I believe that we are moving into a more normal pattern. But um, there is a real chance that the red curve is going to reassert itself if uh, things, if COVID continues to COVID, as it were. Uh, finally, moving on to the flatbed forecast. 
Um, you can see again the blue line being the actual market rates observed by DAT, and then off to the right, uh, that same strands of spaghetti. The short term is uh, continuing to project that that long, long flatbed rally continuing forward into the future, whereas the rate cast forecast, unlike the others, is not projecting as sharp of a correction, but instead kind of a gradual controlled glide down to looks like a dollar ninety. And I think that um, we're going to it's going to be interesting times in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I hope for everybody's sakes, uh, even though it means slightly lower rates, that the normal seasonal patterns are reasserting themselves because that means that things are going back to normal. Thanks for the update, Ned. As we both talked about, I think the next couple of weeks are going to be really telling for what the second half of the year holds in store. Yeah, no, we, we wait with anticipation. Uh, and speaking of anticipation, we do have some exciting news coming next, right? Yes, we do. So each week, Ned and I bring you market updates from the DAT IQ analytics point of view. As I mentioned earlier, Dean Croak is going to be hosting a new carrier focus show from DAT1 that looks specifically at freight, what's driving demand and where freight is moving. Dean has more than 35 years of industry experience and is a principal industry analyst at DAT. Um, since we launched DAT1 last week, we've had a lot of questions and comments, and we thought it was who better to answer those questions than Nadia Duke Boone, who is the head of product at DAT. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dean, who will introduce Nadia and tell us more about DAT1. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Very excited about the new show, uh, where we're going to be covering a lot of the uh, demand drivers for truckload freight by taking the pulse of other modes of transport, plus looking at the regular monthly uh, economic indicators that are produced for the industry to look at. So I'd like to welcome Nadia Duke Boone to the show. Prior to joining uh, DAT, Nadia had more than 25 years experience in software and engineering and product development, both in hands-on role and as a technical and product lead. Uh, at DAT, Nadia is in charge of making sure we're building the right products and ensuring we're giving truckers, carriers, shippers and brokers the intuitive intelligent tools they need to run their businesses. So welcome to DAT, Nadia. Uh, before we dive into discussing the new DAT1 app, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and the opportunities DAT has for improving its product range? Sure. Prior to joining uh, DAT a few months ago, I was a general manager and VP of product at New Relic. New Relic is a pretty rapidly growing SaaS company that makes software tools for software engineers and IT ops folks. Um, and I worked there in a variety of roles for four years. And before that, as you said in my intro, I've worked in tech pretty much my whole career, one, one way or another. So I was really excited about the chance to join uh, DAT for a couple of reasons. One is that everyone here is so passionate about our customers. And the other is that I think our industry is at a really interesting inflection point in terms of really starting to understand that there's a lot more we can do with technology to make people's lives easier, to make their businesses more profitable. So when you bring those two things together, uh, it's I'm really excited to be part of DAT and part of making some of these amazing tools for our customers over the coming years. Yeah, that's great. You know, customer-centric product development is uh, not as easy as many think. I've seen a lot of products developed uh, by technical uh, folks without, you know, uh, a high focus on the customer side of the application. So tell us a little bit more about the new DAT1 app. Sure, well, let, let's start with our customers and one of their problems, right? Yeah. Truckers' lives are super complex and part of that complexity is that they're having to juggle multiple apps when they're on the road. So we set out to solve that problem, to say, how could we bring all of that together into one unified app? And that's what DAT1 is. It's a new free mobile app um, that is the one thing that operators, uh, owner operators or carriers or drivers um, are going to need when they're on the road. So they can use it to find a load and then they can use it to find all of those services along the way. I think Truck drivers' lives are complicated enough. Certainly nothing is getting simpler in these days. Um, and so with DAT1, we're setting out to solve that problem. And, and this new release that came out at the end of June is really just our first step on that journey. Got it. So I'm just curious, what led the product team down this path? Uh, well, two things. The first one you already mentioned, Dean, which is customer centricity, right? We're passionate about yeah. our customers and we listen to them. We talk to them every day, all the time. And we were hearing about this, about this challenge of having to bounce from app to app. And we wanted to solve that problem for them. Um, and the second is that DAT1 really is a one-stop shop for all things freight. Um, you know, of course, people know us for our load boards, um, but we really have an end-to-end portfolio and we wanted to bring that into one easy to use place and that's our vision for DAT1 mobile and where we're going to be going with it. 
So following on uh, from the one-stop shop analogy, uh, what sort of tools are available for carriers, drivers, shippers, brokers in the DAT1 app? Sure. Well, after they've uh, maybe found that load using the load board, um, they can start to find other services on the road. So we've partnered with uh, Truck Park to uh, help people find parking. Truck Park provides secure parking over 100 places nationwide. And when folks book using our app, they can get a 15% discount on that parking. So free app plus a discount. That's a pretty good deal. Um, and then we've also partnered with Here Technologies. Here provides really great truck specific maps. Um, so those are right there in the app now. Um, but beyond that, there's really just a myriad of services from way stations and rest areas and truck stops, all the things you might need um, when you're out there trying to uh, get something delivered. Yeah, you know, I've been using the DAT1 app all week and I love some of the features, including what's available at a truck stop. So when you search for fuel, for example, it'll bring up on the on the user interface where the truck stops are. And, and with ELDs now in place for everybody, that's the, you know, the big time constraint for carriers is the 14 hour clock. So, you know, when you're searching for fuel, it's not just the price. You need to know how many pumps are at the truck stop, you know, just how many parking spots they've got, uh, what type of document and permit services such as trip pack. All of these things within the app lead to a more efficient use of time. So. You know, I found in my, you know, in my time on the road that sometimes a great price per gallon at a truck stop where there are very few pumps can mean long wait times, which negates the savings on fuel. And these days, time is literally money with ELDs in place. So um, as someone who's worked in the industry and, and driven many miles, having access to all of this in one app sounds appealing. So um, what are the future plans for the app and um, what sort of features do you think we'll be adding down the road? Sure, uh, we're gonna be adding more amenities. So like more par more parking partners you're gonna see, uh, but then also working to merge in all of that DAT1 goodness. So folks who are using our on-time tracking app now, that's gonna be part of DAT1 and then eventually our full load board. So over time, you can see that this will be the replacement for all the DAT1 mobile apps. With this first release, we're really excited because it is a great upgrade from DAT Trucker, which a lot of folks are using now. And we're excited about people checking out this first release and letting us know what they think. Yeah, I love the idea of having access to loads on a load board within a couple of hundred miles of where I'm parked based on where uh, the navigation system may, may have taken me from within the app. It's a, it's a really cool product. So Nadia, that sounds great. Uh, for the viewers, you can download our new DAT1 app for free at the App Store for iPhones or at the Google Play Store for Android users. For more information, visit dat.com backslash DAT1 app. Thanks, Dean and Nadia. I think that was really um, helpful to help folks understand um, the DAT1 app and uh, how it's going to help carriers kind of make their life a little easier on the road. Um, what did you think about it, Ned? I feel like we've been doing a lot of things that have been more broker or large carrier focused. And so being able to offer this kind of service to the smaller carriers that make up a really huge and important part of the DAT ecosystem, I think is really important. And I want to make sure that we're able to deliver that value that they expect from DAT. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us this week. Uh, I want to remind everybody that you can find your weekly updates at DAT.com. And this is different, DAT.com slash market update. It's not COVID-19 anymore. It's DAT.com slash market update. Uh, you can also email questions to us at our Ask IQ inbox. That's ASKIQ at DAT.com. Uh, you can email that to also receive our top 50 lanes report for free. So that is the top 50 uh, spot lanes um, both short-term historicals and short-term forecasts. I want to thank everybody for, for tuning in and I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you all in two weeks.